Hey, so it's that time of the month. Not that time of the month, I don't get that one. But anyway, it's time for my monthly favorites. I love, love, love the way this mask feels after I take it off. This is by Clinical Works and all you have to do is wear it five minutes. It feels really strange and awkward and I think, I mean, I think they should make one for a masculine face because definitely the eye part is off. I think the nose and the face. Uh, mouth is good. This doesn't really stick because of my beard. But anyway, if you want a nice glow, nice soft skin, I recommend you use one of these or any other. I mean, I've only tried these. I've never tried any other brands, but my cousin Julie. Hey Julie, gave me this Karuna exfoliated mask. I'm gonna try this this one next to see how if I like this one or this one better. But I like how the way this feels. I just hate that that I have to keep touching this to my face so it can stick. Well, anyway, five minutes are up. Look at my skin looks after that mask. Well, anyway, another one of my favorite things is this painting of mine that I painted. It's part of the docu series that I have. So if you haven't seen that, make sure to check it out. So anyway, her name is Molly, named after one of my friends. Hey, Molly, because my friend Kim mentioned that it looked like her. What's really great about this painting is the textural quality that it has. What's really great about this painting is the textural. What's really great about this painting is the textural quality that it has. This was painted on top of a Jackson Pollock exercise I had done back when I was a teacher. I mean, I like her expression. It's like she doesn't give two poopsters about anything. I like her eyes, a very deep blue. The background, the pattern. I really, really love this painting. So it's one of my favorite things. So now she hangs here. One of my other favorite things is a book by the Sakari twins, uh, Pray the Gay Away. I actually did a video about this. Check out the book. It's at Amazon. It's only like $11. Really good. It's uh, very relatable, very funny, very witty. Uh, if you want to feel identified in literature, this is a great book. Not that I'm a huge drinker or anything, but I love my little uh, flask. It's made out of cow hide. Sorry, PETA. Right now it's empty, by the way, but I think it's really cool. The fact that it's made from cow hide it just makes it very original. Another thing that I love are my happy socks and underwear, limited edition, Keith Haring style. So I'll just show you the socks, but anyway, I'm a huge Keith Haring fan of the underwear. Make sure you check out my other video and you'll be able to see me in the Keith Haring underwear. But anyway, I really love these. Really, really cool. Really neat. Really neat. And also, I'm really in love with these boots that my friend sent over that I'm actually going to paint and I'll make a vlog about it too, but they're super old and I love wearing old shoes. I think that gives them character. So don't throw your old boots away. You know, I think the older they look, the more worn they are, the more comfortable they are as well, but I think the cooler they look when they're older. So anyway, great pair of boots. And I think, yeah, these are uh, snake skin. Once again, sorry, Peta. Oh, and I love this jacket I'm wearing. I realized I was, I was wearing because I was getting hot. Uh, but yeah, this is the Levi jacket that I bought at Buckle. And I used to work at Buckle back when I was younger, and that's where I met some of my friends. I had a bad experience when I went to this last Buckle, so I probably won't be returning because I have a lot of like brand loyalty until I have a bad experience and I just won't go in either. And that happened to be at Buckle, so. Wah, wah, wah. And this sweater too that I love, it's a painting by Bosch, is the Garden of Earthly Delights. The Moan described as Sodom and Gomorrah, but anyway, it's a great, great sweater. And lastly, I want to recommend something on Netflix, shows on Netflix that I've been watching. I'm a huge Netflix fan. And the first one is Queer Eye. Now, Queer Eye, it was an old show, but it used to be called Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, where, where five guys redid the life of a straight man, but now it's not Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. It's just straight. <laughs> now it's just Queer Eye, because it's for anybody. It's eight episodes. I cried in every episode, except the last one. Not that it wasn't a good episode. It just, uh, I didn't identify with it. It was had to do with firefighters, which I was a firefighter, but I stopped doing it because you have to wake up at crazy hours. It's five guys. It's Tan, who's in charge of fashion. It's Jonathan, who's in charge of grooming. And Jonathan is my absolute favorite. I love his hair. I was going to cut my hair, but I didn't cut it because Jonathan's hair is really long. And the way he plays with it, I love that. Bobby, uh, I think Bobby's the one who's like, he's not lame. He's just like, he's like, Bobby's like a salad with no dressing. There's something missing in him. But, I mean, he's great decor-wise, and the way he rearranges their homes, I think he's great. But just personality-wise, I think he's lacking a little bit. Anthony is in charge of food and wine. Also very cute, very handsome, and very young, I think. I mean, he's in charge of food, but he doesn't really prepare elaborate dishes. It's more like just fast and easy. Something you can make really fast. And I think in the fast-paced life we live here in America, 
you have to have good recipes that are fast and easy to make, and he does that. And then Karamo, also one of my favorite ones. God, he's so attractive. He's in charge of culture, whatever that means. He infuses people with, you know, confidence. I think he did more like confidence boosting more so than culture. They all have partners, and they're all, two of them are married, I think. The only one that's single is Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan. But anyway, it's a good show. I, like I said, I cried in every episode. You will feel so identified. What I like about this show is that it they went to people who normally wouldn't be friends with gay guys. And at the end of each episode, like the people they help or the guys they help are so truly grateful that they were in their lives. And I just think it's a great example of how different worlds can mesh and we don't have to be at odds with each other. You know, we can... We, we are all humans and we can actually function together amongst even though we are so different all of them are very different and let's stop hating what we don't know or understand let's start embracing you'd be surprised you know what you could find out if you embrace something that you're completely um, against you know life is really too short to hate things or be that aggressive towards something you doesn't have to identify with you don't have to hate it you know just be respectful, you know? And the last thing is a documentary by René, the, who was in Calle 13, called Residente. Oh my god, and I was painting, I put it just because I wanted to have something to hear in the background, but I had to stop what I was doing because it's just a really beautiful documentary about just how music is now and how watered down and how lacking it is. I guess he does a DNA test and, and everywhere that he has blood from he goes to experience her music in a very organic and very uplifting way. It's a very good documentary on Netflix once again where I watch it and watch a Residente by René de Calle 13. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Tell me what you like. Tell me what was your favorite item that I showed today. Please like, subscribe and share. Until next time, adios y bye.